six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here. After decades of selling compact tractors and with tens of thousands of units out in the field, we've come to see guys uh, learn some things the hard way here when it comes to owning a new piece of equipment. So come along with me here today. I'm going to point out to you the five biggest critical mistakes that we see a new tractor owner make. I've unfortunately seen more than one customer forcibly remove his garage door the very first time he took his brand new tractor into his garage. You have to remember when you're sitting in the seat of the tractor, if your roll bar is up, your head is not the high point, right? So if you go into a standard height garage door, or even a normal seven footer or into a shed, you got to keep an eye on how high your roll bar is. They put joints in these things for a reason, right? It's not just for tree branches. It's also because a lot of guys park their tractors in places where the ceiling's not this high. So when you go pull into your building, make sure that you kind of eyeball this thing as you pull in for the very first time and make sure it doesn't do damage as you pull into your garage. Another thing that we can say to that new tractor owner is don't freak out if you see a little drip or a puddle on the floor. Every place in their tractor here that has some kind of fluid reservoir also has a breather. What a breather does is if something is a little overfilled or splashes out for some reason, it allows that fluid to spill out of the reservoir as opposed to building up pressure and potentially cracking or damaging something. You can see one of these breathers right here on the radiator. So the radiator overflows down here into this uh, reservoir and then uh, can also suck fluid back up through again, but if this thing happens to go over full, you've got this little tube here in the front that allows it to flow out and drip down onto the ground. Now, when we go through and prep a tractor for sale, our mechanics are going to go through every fluid reservoir in the tractor and top every one of them off. And if they got a little too much fluid in there, or say you have your tractor sitting on a grate or something inside your garage, it's very possible that some of those fluids may spill over and come out of a breather and drip down onto the floor. Now, obviously, if you see a big pile, a big puddle down there, something you want to go check and make sure the reservoir is not actually leaking but a couple of drips on the floor actually happens fairly frequently and is perfectly normal. Our third critical mistake is related to your implement hydraulics. A lot of guys are surprised to find out that the cylinders that are on your loaders and backhoes actually can leak down while your tractor is parked. I've had more than one guy go and park his backhoe into his garage and back, you know, clear right up against the back wall to try to have the thing take up as little room as possible, only to come out the next day and find that the, uh, the backhoe has now like smashed out his drywall, right? When you park your tractor, if your loader's lifted up in the air, your backhoe outriggers are hanging up, um, they are going to leak down. That's perfectly normal. These cylinders internally can leak fluid, which allows the cylinders to drop down. And you'll see here, this one is set up for shipping and they have zip ties up on here. This is the reason why it's so these cylinders don't fall while the thing is being shipped around. So do watch when you park your brand new tractor in the garage, you know, these outriggers could fall over, say if they're parked beside your car or the backhoe into the back wall of your garage, you need to give some room around the machine for that to happen and expect things to possibly wiggle a little bit while they're parked there. Another area that we see critical errors from new owners is in regards to your implements. The category standard for your three-point hitch isn't very strictly defined. It really only defines, say, the size of these pins down here when they go onto your three-point arms. Because varying tractors can have varying lengths of three points, right? A subcompact is going to have much stubbier arms than, say, a 60-horse utility tractor. Implements often come with fairly long PTO shafts so that they can fit onto a range of tractors. Where this becomes a critical error is if this shaft isn't the right length for your machine. If it's too long, when you lift your implement up, you can actually force this shaft under the pressure of your three-point hitch back into the PTO and shove those mechanical components back into your transmission. When you put an implement onto your tractor for the first time, you need to pay attention to the length of this shaft. On small tractors, it's actually more often than not that you're having to cut these shafts down to a shorter length. You want to pay attention and make sure that this shaft is able to collapse on itself as your implement moves up and down through its travel on your three-point hitch. Just watch for that, that it's not going to bind and shove up into your tractor when you lift the implement up. The final critical mistake that we've seen customers make is not remembering to check the lug nuts on their tires. When we go through and do the setup process on one of these tractors, we're going to go through and use a torque wrench and torque all of these things to whatever they're specified to. But you need to realize that as you start to run a machine, it's going to break in and things are going to wear around. And so if you check your owner's manual, it's actually going to recommend that after the first couple of hours, you go around with the torque wrench yourself and check these lug nuts and make sure they're still tight. You might find that one of them has worked around a little 
little bit. We've even seen customers go so far as to not check those torques for you know 100 hours or so and rig, uh, egg out the rims and stuff a little bit. So it is something that happens and it is your responsibility in order to keep up with that. So you ought to have a torque wrench somewhere in your garage. So those are a couple of the critical errors that we've seen new tractor owners make. You know, hopefully these couple of tips are going to help you from damaging your machine or your property or, or whatever when you first get out there and start running your machine. So uh, here's the many happy years with the equipment that you've got in your shed. Uh, if we can help you with that machine that you've got for any parts, service needs, or you need another tractor or attachments, give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com.